these years I've been thinking, man, I'm not a Proverbs 31 woman. And actually... Are you being celebrated like a Proverbs 31 Am I being woman? celebrated That's like the question. So we need to be asking the men in our lives, are you celebrating us as a Proverbs 31 woman? Yes. Not, don't ask me if I am or not. Are you celebrating me as one? Yeah. Interesting. I like that tactic. I might try. I might try that. <laughs> Let's go. It's a form of manipulation. Wait, it's just, it's just, it's just my my <laughs> Welcome back to Sisterhood. This time we're talking about the modern woman and what it really means and can we have it all? So I'll throw it to you first, Lauren. What do you think the typical modern woman looks like? What does the typical modern woman look like? How I guess... would you describe her? The thing is, I feel quite strongly that this whole having it all thing is really toxic and damaging and da-da-da. So I'd like to describe her as a woman who has picked her priorities for that season and is investing in them well. Yeah. But I think when we talk about the modern women, what we think of is like someone with a baby on their hip mm. and who's in a conference call who's <gasps> like dressed amazingly and they've just finished their pilates but they've got a fresh cooked meal and a <laughs> salad for lunch yeah. and you know like da 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 where actually what i think we should be looking to is like god centered priorities and picking maybe one or two of those things for that time. So you don't think all those things, like coffee in hand, baby on the other, briefcase, like all of that is possible? I mean, it's possible. But are we doing it well? Is it, is it yeah. worth it, you know? Is like... it worth it? That's a good question. Is it worth it? What does that mean? I said, is it healthy? Oh, is it healthy? <laughs> well, I think, is it, is it worth it? It's a, good, it's a good question that I made up in my head clearly. But is it worth it? Do you feel like that is something that can I think get it us some? Comes at great cost to win. Yeah, and actually, like, the, also, I think it's a privilege. It's a very privileged outlook because there are loads of women, there are loads of people who would love to choose what those priorities are going to be, but actually, mm. they're confined to their financial situation or their family situation or whatever. So they're sort of. It's not a case of like pick where you're going to put your time it's like survive and that's yeah. and that's just it but actually like telling people who do have the opportunity to direct their attention towards one thing specific, equally yeah that they don't have to do that that they don't have to just give all of their time to that one thing because they can have everything I think just it, I just haven't seen it work really well I've just seen women kind of spiral trying to chase that sort of mm. elusive thing. Yeah, and I often feel that we're the ones doing that as women. We're the ones like trying to have it all. And, but men aren't kind of able to pick up the slack in areas where we put some stuff down. I say able to because I feel like it's unfair to say that men don't do that. But I think it's we're then trying to do all of the things where men kind of carry on doing what they were always doing and then don't help us in that extra way where we've dropped stuff, which means essentially we're still doing what we're doing and more and are getting more stressed. How do you feel about that? Because that's what that comes into what you're saying about being healthy as well, Cass, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, you see, I don't think that we should have to do everything because why? Um, <laughs> why am I having to do everything? I, yeah, I, I, when I think of a modern woman, I do think of the woman that has uh, chosen for herself the life that she wants to live. Because mm. back, you know, 100 years ago, that mm. wasn't possible. We could that. not choose. We had to be forced into this way of living. You need a husband to have status. And if mm, your husband yeah. was to pass away and you're a widow, now you've just dropped down at the bottom of everything. You never really got to pick, can I work? Can I not? Can I vote? You never got any of that. So, yeah, I think for me, that is what it is. Are we cho cho choice? Not being forced into anything, not being forced into labour, not being forced into having children just because of this. Forced not into labour or forced into labour. Either either way. <laughs> like, yeah. Either kind of labour. Like, any kind of labour. Yeah, well, that's but a very serious choice, thing. Yeah, that is, for me, choice. what defines a modern woman. And I think if a modern woman chooses to want to try and, have, you know, be a mother and work and everything, she's chose that. Um, if a I do woman think chooses, that a lot of people don't, don't realise that maybe they're making that choice when they wouldn't want to because mm. it's just 
you kind of just get that message you constantly that you should be doing. Be doing. Yeah. Or, so I think that I think that there's not enough sort of laid out on the table of like all of this is good, all of this is success. But not together, not but, at the same yeah, time. Or like you say, if someone has chosen, like actually, I believe I can balance this, then fine. But I think everyone keeps going for that option. That's a good point, actually, that we see what's presented and think that we should be doing all of the things we're presented with. But I think it's a generational thing also, as our parents, even grandparents, wouldn't have had that option, all those options. Mm. And they may see us as being freer to do those things. Um, and so we're, we're thinking we should take advantage of all those things. And in doing so, I think we then do ourselves a disservice because we're not doing all of those things to the ability that we could be doing them if we chose like two out of five or three out of five. And again, back to you again, saying it, it's just not really healthy and helpful. No, um, no. I mean, back in the day when women were just, you know, homemakers, that was what they focused on their time on. Whereas now I feel like we're expected to make the home and work and this mm. and that. And that's not, when do we have time just to sit and, you know. So I, don't, I don't even think it's about that, like, necessarily you would be achieving more in two areas out of five. It's actually like, how much are you enjoying these mm. incredible elements of your life mm. when you're packing them in next to each other like that your so friends tightly. your family your mm. children your yeah. job you know actually like you probably can dedicate enough time to keep all of those things going but are you really appreciating enjoying them and are you fully present yeah. in all of those things mm. yeah i think but i i like the idea that we can that there is someone or there are people that might be watching or listening and think i'm actually able to balance all those plates like the proper 31 woman who we all love. And Lauren has some quite strong thoughts on <laughs> That does her. not say a face that loves, she's like, oh. She's a face of love. Because that's, that's, the, <laughs> that's the kind of ideal that we're presented with. Every time is like, that's how we should be. Look how much she did. She... Do you remember back on the day, right, oh. when Tom Cruise went on Oprah to talk about how much he loved Katie Holmes? Oh, really bad. No. And he jumped, on, he the jumped sofa. on the sofa. He was like, hey, that's us. Why jump did on he the do sofa. that? And just to make his point really yeah. strong. That do you love that? That was a big thing. I didn't really watch TV. I was quite. Um, I was quite. Um, okay, yeah. You would have needed a TV to see. It. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> we had TVs and we saw that. And this Proverbs thirty one thing. I feel that same passion that mm. Tom Cruise expressed. Tell us. Tell us. Right. The woman of Proverbs thirty one is not a checklist for women. It is a song, a celebration for men to recognize the things that women do. Mm. It's not for women to hold up against themselves by way of comparison, like this is what we can do. This is These are all the range of things that women contributed to the household. And that was a celebration. And in, in the Jewish tradition, men learn that by heart, not women. It's, wow. it's not, Interesting. it's there as a, as a celebration, as an ode, mm. not as a checklist. And we've got that wrong somewhere. So all these years I've been thinking, man, I'm not a Proverbs 31 woman and actually, are you being celebrated like a Proverbs 31? Am I being woman? celebrated That's like a So we need to be asking the men in our lives, are you celebrating us as a Proverbs 31 woman? Yes. Not, don't ask me if I am or not. Are you celebrating me as one? Yeah. Interesting. I like that tactic. I might try, I might <laughs> try that. <laughs> Let's go. It's a form of manipulation. It's a form of manipulation. It's a form of manipulation. I like that. <laughs> That's going to be my dating profile <laughs> next. <laughs> um, and that... One thing we haven't really discussed is children, really. And none of us have children at the moment. And I know that people, I've got friends who are kind of going to their 30s and 40s are thinking, if I don't meet someone and I still want to have children, what are my options? And they're considering like egg freezing mm. and they're asking about fertility. Where do you stand, Cass? I'll go to you first. Where do you stand on the idea of freezing your eggs so that in the future, if you, if you meet someone lay some in line and maybe you're uh, advancing in years, shall we say, you might still have an option to have. I would absolutely do that. You would. I've actually researched prices. I've researched centres. I have done it all because I don't like the pressure of mm. um, someone, well, I'd say someone, my body deciding or anyone really deciding or me deciding when I want to have children. I don't want that pressure. I don't want to have to think about it. So if I freeze my eggs, I can then do that later on in life. 
I have seven siblings. I'm the oldest sibling without children. Wow. Um, where are you in that? I am somewhere in the middle. Uh, where am I? I've got four older sisters, one younger sister, two younger brothers. And they've all got? Bar my little sister. And she's three years younger than me. When she gets to my age, she wants to have at least one child. Oh, wow. So I am the oldest sibling without children. And they're yeah. always asking me, so when are you going to have... When? Because you're Long getting older time. now. Oh, well, I'll tell you that. Yeah, like, well, you can't, you know, you're 30 and you're going to go into your 30s with no kids. And I'm like, well, yeah, because I have things that I want to do. Mm. And I, I don't see a child feeding into that for the next few years. But biologically speaking, I have to, at some point in the next 10 years or so, get that going. If I can freeze them and think about that in 15 years, absolutely, yeah. So that kind of sounds like a situation where we are trying to have more than would be available if we just pursued like the one route because like you're kind of almost we're almost like staving off that opportunity to have children because you're, you're we're thinking maybe it won't happen in the maybe traditional natural way this option of like egg freezing gives us the space to do that in the future space it yeah. gives you a lot i don't feel as pressured when i think mm. about it i don't feel as pressured i don't feel as anxious i don't feel like oh my gosh, um, am I even going to get to have them? I've thought about adoption. I've thought about all these different things. Yes, Lauren. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> you can, as the host, you can now speak. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's a, yes. Yeah. You can, you can yeah, you're not the teacher. You don't I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just sit in the corner. Do you think, and this isn't me like, I hope this doesn't come across critical. Okay. Do you think that the thing to address there is not lengthening your biological window? Mm but challenging your anxiety around timelines? Potentially. I mean, because growing up, I always did have a, a mm, I'll say a, a timeline-ish. Like when you get to 25, you want to have this. Mm -hmm. And when you get to 30, you want to have this. Kids never really factored into my life up until I got to about 28. Um, I did not think about kids for the These whole time. These numbers you're throwing around are really young. And they're young. so young. Yeah, I know. Just, they're well, really young. You, you're stressing me out. <laughs> I didn't think about them. And again, I think because I come from a family who yeah. are very People big on, let's quickly. have kids. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, even my mom, she had children quite young. She has eight children. By the time she was my age, she had like five and I have zero. And so I guess I've always thought of, I didn't think about having them myself, but it's always been a thing in my family. Like, so when are we going to have kids? We need a new baby. You know, we need, so my timeline, yes, I think maybe I need to challenge the timeline and that actually I still have time, plenty of time. It's not that, uh, yeah, it's just not that deep if I don't have them right now. So maybe that's what it is. I need to challenge that. Okay. Thank you for that therapy session. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for my I'll just lie down. Yeah, in, <laughs> in <voice her> later. <laughs> so just a couple of statistics around um, parenting. So the Office of, Nas Office of National Statistics said in 2021, three in four mothers with dependent children were in work in the UK, reaching its highest level in the last 20 years. Um, and nine in 10 dads are also in work, also on the ONS. In 2022, employed women with dependent children spent more time on unpaid childcare and household work, which is at 4.2 hours per day that employed men with dependent children, which was 2.6 hours. Mm. So even if they're both employed, women do more housework and parenting activities on top of our jobs uh, than men do. And if a woman gets married, her life expectancy goes down. And if a man gets married, his life expectancy wow. goes down. Wow, that really and interesting. If you're recovering from a bypass, from bypass surgery, a woman with a family, recovers far worse than a woman without just because she is expected so much more quickly to, to, back, to look after to... husband and children. Wow. Yeah. That is very interesting. That doesn't that depend on the family, though, and the expectations that they have on her as the, as the yeah, mother Yeah, massively, or but that's or... average. Yeah. So, like, there will be some that do it really well. There'll be some that do it so badly. Yeah. Mm. But on average, that is, that's the situation for women. They, that, and it's not even just, like... The washing and the da da da. Like, e even in relationships that I see, because I do see this complementarian male headship relationship set up working incredibly well when the man is 
respectful mm -hmm. and is literally at that point of, I would lay down my life for you as Christ did for the church, you know, that level of dedicated towards his family. So I'm not sort of criticizing that as a setup. I think it's amazing when it works, but I do think that even in those setups and in egalitarian relationships, women still take on more. I like, what's this child gonna eat? When are we dropping mm. them there? You, you know, even if it's like the husband ends up dropping them, most of the couples I know, it's the woman who's gone, blah, blah, needs to be there mm. at four o'clock yeah. and you do the dropping. And they're the ones constantly doing the maths and the navigating it and the logistics. And that is exhausting. It is. You know. Do we know any women who are living this like lifestyle where they're presenting a real kind of girl boss attitude in the workplace, at home, and it's kind of admirable? With kids or without? Good question. With children, I'd say with children, like kind of doing it, because we see a lot of influencers like doing, you know, showing how amazing they are, all these different things. But is there anyone we see, we see like doing it really well? And we're like, okay, maybe this could could be something that, that works in practice rather than kind of sh shooting it down like you know we've said before maybe it's unhealthy but or in your life is there anyone we see being able to kind of like juggle everything and doing it well? I definitely see successful Christian women who are dedicated to their husbands who are dedicated to their children I don't know to what extent they work a sort of nine to five in the office yeah, type kind of, of thing. I think that the majority that I know need a little bit more flexibility than that. But like Emma Borquet, who's got a book oh, coming yeah. out. Like Governor and, B's wife. Yes. Yeah. She's got, you know, two kids and she's so real about how she talks about that whole thing. Or Monique Thomas, again, she's got a book coming out, but then she's got these gorgeous little kids running oh. around. So like I, I've seen it from a few like, mm. re like reasonably high profile people in the Christian community and I really respect it, but I don't think that they would claim they had it all. Yeah. I think they would claim that they've had to choose, you know, things that are most, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but you know, that they've had to pick their priorities and it means sacrifice. Yeah, that's true. And I think with all these things as well, you do have to, like your focus is gonna change from day to day and like you might be working on something at work or a project where it means like for a certain period of time, this is your focus. You might hit an age where you're like, actually now I'm gonna focus on, you know, I wanna have a baby mm. or I now want to work a bit less or work more or, um, yeah. So Cass, earlier you were saying that you are looking, have looked into egg freezing. Um, one thing I found researching this is that it's just really expensive. Yeah. So how much is it? Tell us how much it is. You see, the place that I found, it said like five grand. Five grand. To harvest them or something like that. I love them being able to with store. Hand there. Yeah, I don't know what that is, like harvesting out the eggs. I, don't know. <laughs> I picture a giant syringe that they just inject into and Maybe. like a turkey based stuff. If I could eggs. do it myself at home, I'd do that. That's not, not biologically know. sound. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but then to store them, you have to pay every year to store them as well. Oh, yeah. mate, you pay so, egg rent. Egg rent. Yeah, so it's okay. quite so it's actually quite expensive, and I think there's this this um, idea that you, if you're single, that you have all this money because you haven't got kids to worry about, or you haven't got, I don't know, anniversary presents to spend your money on. But not every single person. The two key. The two, <laughs> the two <laughs> key expenses. <laughs> anniversary presents. Anniversary is <laughs> really stacked. Gosh. <laughs> That's what we have to look forward to. <laughs> As if they remember the anniversary. Yeah, no, you're that. right. It doesn't mean, but there, there, you know, there are fewer things. Like my sister's money just goes on her three kids, mm. you know, and and I get, I get to invest in more luxuries, travel, nicer food, sometimes going out and stuff, far more than she does, and I totally get that. Yeah. Um, that doesn't mean that we're like Scrooge McDuck, like diving into our swimming pool of money, you know. <laughs> but also, I don't just have five k to drop plus egg rent, yeah, just to keep some some of those bad boys on ice. Exactly. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I love how you call me egg rent. <laughs> I know, it's gonna stay in my head now. Hashtag egg rent. Yeah. <laughs> but for you know, I I I don't think I even really want children and so my kind of idea of this like having all still feels quite full even without that kind of idea what do people in the church say when you say that because I think I, people expect yeah. women in the church to want children mm. I think I think 
it's tricky now because in the circles I'm moving, people will know that I lost a child. So nobody's kind of on me saying, you have to, because they know that it doesn't always work out, right? Mm. Um, but I think there are people that doesn't even come up. It's not even a, a conversation starter for them. They don't, they don't want them, they've never considered it. It's not an issue for them. And so women who, who uh, just want to have a, you know, have a really good job and travel and do all these things, like that is also a, a way of kind of having or being top of your job and having a, getting a, an incredible house and a mortgage and all these different things you can do. But I, I find that pressuring as well because I might just want to have what people might see as a kind of mediocre job just so I can be happy. And it may not pay like 200K a year, but I might really want to do it. But as a single person, that's really hard to uphold because everything is money, right? So how can how can women just really like live this like really full life where they can have what they want and do what they want without worrying about that thing of I haven't got someone to support me to do those things. Does that make sense? Like where if you're if you're wanting to do all these these things by yourself and, and do what you want, how do you manage to do that without worrying about the kind of everyday practicalities of like finances or like single person supplements when you're traveling or that mm. kind of thing? Like how does that how do you do that? I, you know what's really funny? I had this conversation yesterday. I never factor in a partner into my life plans because I never saw my mom do that. So I've never, ever, ever sat there and mom's thought, okay, parent. my mom's a single parent. So for me, I've always, when I plan my life, mm. it's never in mind of, well, someone's gonna come along and support me. Is that, no, I'm gonna do this on my own. This is why I researched egg freezing, because I thought, well, if I don't get a man, or a husband, a man. <laughs> don't get if I don't a have man. a husband, I'm going to do that on my own. When I think to buy a house, I don't think, okay, I'm gonna Would buy you actually? a husband. No. No partner on the horizon. Absolutely. Because yeah. I think I could do it. I think I could quite successfully... Because you've seen it. Because I've yeah. seen it and because yeah, my mum did that and I thought I could do that. So I don't... I guess to answer that question, I don't know. For me, I just... I just think about it on my own and I'm just thinking, OK, how do I make sure I'm the best person... For you. For me, so that if, if and when I do come to make that decision, I am everything I need to be. And I've got a good community around me as well. That's important. Because a community yeah. raises a child. I've got yeah. siblings, I've yeah. got friends, I've got people yeah. that will help out. I'm not, having a partner isn't the be all and end all. Yeah. There's so many other people that can help raise yeah. a child. So yeah. I guess that's what it is, building the community, building yourself um, and not putting so much pressure on, right, I need a partner to do all of this. Because <laughs> actually, you don't. You don't. How do you feel, Lauren? I disagree. <laughs> Yeah, go on, disagree. Well, so, okay, one thing I do do that I think is quite negative is that I think through my life in two different ways. And I'm like, if I have a partner, this is the trajectory I'd like to go down. If I, have a, if I don't have a partner, this is the tra oh, trajectory wow. I'd like to go down. So I kind of, I have like a sort of sliding door scenario going on in my head, it's right. I don't think that's super healthy. That's just my sort of like admission. The, what I think, though, is that those sacrifices, the financial constraints of being single, as well as the financial benefits, I think every stage in your life comes with perks and challenges. And the challenges when it comes to the money when you're single is the fact that it is more expensive to pay rent when you're not splitting rent on a one-bed place mm. with your partner. Or it means you have to go into a shared house, which sometimes isn't a great setup, you know. But then the perks, financial perks of being single are that you you don't have to pay for nursery or childcare or anniversary presents or Very whatever important. it is that's weighing you down financially. Yeah. Basically, all of these having it all things, I don't think I can have them all. I think life is a series of choices. You choose which path you go down. You can't go down all the paths. Don't spend time worrying about the ones you didn't walk down. Enjoy the ones you've got. And if, if actually it's like, I, you know, for me, if I didn't end up with a partner, there's no way I would want to, to create children on my own. And I deeply respect it. And I think, and particularly, you know, for somebody... Who, who has raised a whole family on their own. Like, mm. to see that done well, I totally see why you, you could see that in your future. Mm. But for me, I just, I think I would see that as that's a road I didn't walk down and then enjoy the perks of the other the road. The way you are, yeah. yeah. That feels like that's, your priorities are really clear with that. Like, you know that 
you'd focus on the one thing yeah. and kind of go with that. Yeah, and I feel like God's really clear with me about what my thing what is, it is yeah. and what road I should be walking down and what I should be investing my time in, and mm. I love that. And for you, Cass, like a modern woman, what would your priority be? What, in general? Well, we're talking about like a, the, mod, the modern woman. It changes, woman. I think. I mean, at the moment, it's, it's, I prioritise my career and my health. Yeah. But that could change in five years' time if I was to have a child or a husband. That's gonna, there's no, it doesn't, it's, it just, it changes as and when, it changes every year. Last year, my priority was, okay, I need to save this amount to move here. Mm. I've moved there now. Now my priority is, okay, I need to do this. So yeah, I think it just, there's no. It's like fix. we're kind of adjusting to the circumstances. And like you said, you've got like this idea, if you're with this person, then you'll go down this route this person to go down this route or, yeah. or not. Mm. Um, and that's the thing women are really good at is we're really good at like juggling and adjusting and like changing pace and being resourceful about, resourceful about where we are. Mm. Um, I think we together kind of decided that there is, there is a benefit in the focus and choosing like what you want to focus on and then embracing that fully. Um, and that feels like a really healthy modern woman to me. Thanks for watching Sisterhood. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.